Shout out without trying. Shout out without trying. Uh, big, big, big shout out to without trying. Without trying, game. All right, uh, my name is David Miller, age 46 years old. I'm currently homeless in Akiki, Maryland. I was born and raised over here about 10 minutes up the street in Brandywine, Maryland. Uh, it's been a long road. Uh, I just don't give up. I got plenty of faith between a uh, short military career and uh, United States Marine Corps. I've had my own business. Um, had a lot of loss, a lot of gain. All I can really say is keep the faith up. Keep the faith in the good Lord because he is there watching all, all of us. We're all here together. Um, but like really, it's like there's things in this world that people can't even really understand or see and that our government is hiding from us. Um, a lot of us had to sign papers stating that we would not reveal anything or information that we have learned overseas. Um, nothing's what it seems and everything we've been taught has been issued by the government. Just keep an open mind and judge for yourself because your mind and that little inner voice is always going to tell you the truth and what's right. Um, other than that, it's like being homeless out here in Akiki is okay. I mean, a lot of people love love the homeless people. They actually care for you, bring you stuff, make sure they come up every day to make sure you ate. Akiki, Maryland is a great place. Um, <laughs> Well, let's let's start. Let's let's take it back a little bit, right? Oh, good. So, did you grow up in a uh, single parent family home, or did you have two parents, or how did how did how was your childhood? Uh, you could call it a empty home almost. Dad was always gone working or drunk on the bed, passed out. Okay. Mom was always working constantly to pay the bills, so we kept a roof over our head. Left me to free run for myself since I was like ten years old. You know, no guidance or anything like that. Um, so I figured the best thing I could do was, you know, since I graduated, was join the military. So you graduated high school? Yeah. I graduated okay. From Park. Okay. Yeah, ninety-seven. Okay. But, yeah, back then it was all right. I mean, I ain't seen the school now lately. But, right. But yeah, um, just a low in the area. About ninety percent of the people down here know me, know me by name. Um, they pretty much know. So, so when you say your, your parents wasn't around, like what you said, they just wasn't, they was working and they just couldn't. They passed out, just couldn't do shit. Oh, they, so they yeah, su suffered from. Uh, passed out drunk and okay. mom was always at work. Gotcha. And then when he wasn't passed out, he was kicking the shit out of us like a grown man. So you had siblings? Yeah. No, I have two older brothers. I'm the youngest of three. Okay. Um, my oldest brother, he does fuel tanks up and down the East Coast. Uh, my middle brother, he works for Pax River Naval Base. He's a civilian contractor, heads up their IT department. That's about as much as I can say on that one. Right. Um, other than that, um, it's like the old man pop when he was up not drunk. Anything would set him off, and dealing with the ex Army Ranger was not pretty. From the age of like, as far back as I can remember, any time either one of us did something wrong or got in trouble, we got our asses kicked like a grown man. Mm. Grabbed by the back of the neck, punched in the face, kicked down the hallway, and he'd stop kicking when his foot hit the bed. So we learned a quick thing. So you, the bed. you was born in Akiki? I was I mean, born in Brandywine, right? Brandywine. Brand oh, okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. All right. Brandywine, Akiki Road. That's right. Crazy. Born on Akiki Road and now I live in Akiki. Yeah. Right, right. But wow. you never go too far from what was home anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. So far as the, far as the, um, when you graduated, what you end up doing then? I went straight to the Marine Corps as soon as I graduated. Okay. Graduated Paris Island in 99. Uh huh. My first deployment was in 2000. It was over in Iraq for Operation Freedom. I had a short, brief comeback. I was back for like seven months, and then they sent us to Kendahar. Right. Which I can't really much say on that because it was a bloodbath, and that's where we had to sign papers about everything. Right. But just so everybody can understand what I'm saying about the things that are here that we don't understand or can't see, a lot of the videos you see on YouTube, like Kendahar, Giant, and all that, that is true. I was actually on the crew that was the third one sent out to find the missing troops. Okay. And all we found was their gear and bones. This mm. thing was literally about 15 foot tall, long red hair, looked like like a kind of like an old Roman soldier, but it had two rows of teeth. Mm. It's a huge human being. I mean, it was huge. It come out the cave and just attacked our platoon. Had one of us hanging. Had the one guy, our sergeant, hanging from the spear, and it took three minutes of 50 cal fire to put it down. Mm. Half his face was blown off before it hit down. 
when we loaded it onto the pallet, the pallet was 20 by 20. And when this thing was laying on the side, its shoulder was right here to me. That's how mm. big it was. And it was laying on the side with a four inch pallet on it. Mm. Uh, this thing was huge. And it's like the things that they don't tell us about and that are really there. I guess, I don't know, people say they're trying to protect us, but I say they're trying to control us. Right. Because information is power. We have more information against them. We don't need them. Right. That's like if uh, the one, all of us, the human race, there's different ethical backgrounds, different ethical groups, but we're all humans. There's only one race, human race. It don't matter your skin color, your tone, your eye color, right. how much beard you have, or balls. Right. Box, you know what I mean? We're all humans. And they, the government really literally pulls the, I call it the whoop and they tell you one thing, have you focused on it like COVID, while they're doing other things over here. It's like uh, Desert Storm and Operation Freedom. Okay. That was liberation of the oil over there, because China was going to buy it, we are going to have to buy it from China. So okay. we went in and took it. Right. And that way we have more control over it. Right. The United States government is one of the crookedest things there is. It's, uh, how shall I put it, it was like, uh, the best way it was explained to me is it's basically for the rich, but on us, the middle and lower class. Right. That we have to pay for and fund everything while they step back and enjoy their lives. But just keep in mind that nothing to tell you is true. I'm telling you nothing. I was like, COVID. COVID really wasn't even a disease. It was a man-made disease. You can look it up. You can only patent it something that's man-made. And the COVID virus is patented by Bill Gates. So right. it was developed as a biological weapon used against the people. It escaped over in China. Population control. Yeah. Because you figure we're growing uh, a city the size of New York every year. Right. And before long, the planet's not going to be able to sustain us. We're either going to go out in a ball of flames or in a whimper of everybody starving. Right. And that's why another reason why they're letting all the immigration in here with uh, the Mexicans and everybody from down south coming in is because they're giving them jobs and everything else, but it's also going to do the one thing. It's going to lower the pay standards. Minimum wage is not going to go back up because now they got somebody to do the work for cheaper and they ain't got to do nothing. And it's just it's basically it just, they're trying to control everything so they can stay where they're at and not have to have work. Right. It's like, uh, I shouldn't even say it, but Blackwater, uh, what is the other one? The, the Illuminati is uh, it's real, believe it or not. There actually is a group. Um, I was actually abducted into the Freemason Society a year ago. You believe it or not, there's a homeless Freemason standing right in front of me. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have meetings once every three months in D.C. Um, a lot of us, we do it on Zoom if we can't get there. But it's like... It's all types of different groups that are actually running the country, and if it's not in their benefit, it's just not happening, period. And yeah. It's like, I'm a homeless veteran living behind wise and I could keep in a tent. I can't get no benefits, I can't get no help. Let me ask you a question, right? So when you got out of the military, how did you, how, what happened after you got out of the military? Did you? I started Miller's Maintenance Company. Okay. Um, was doing good. I had four trucks, my house, a trailer I rented out. Right. Um, my wife had her car and I had my truck. Uh, long story short, found out she had a boyfriend. I wasn't breaking up the family, so I told her she can have the spare room. He's not allowed in my house. Uh, pretty much eight years ago on Valentine's Day, she left to go with him and she never came back. She OD'd and died in the motel down in St. Mary's County. Mm, sorry to hear that. Two young daughters that are now currently living with my mother in La Plata. Thank good Lord for her because I wouldn't know what to do being out here on the street with two kids, you know, especially two young girls. Right. And it's like, it's been nothing but an uphill battle, but granted, I don't give up. I don't retreat, I'm not gonna surrender. I've got the best guardian angel there is, the good Lord above. He's been watching out over me, so it's a good people in Hakaki. Everything's just it's going okay. It could be a lot better, but it could be a lot worse, worse too. Right. And no matter what situation you're in, there's always somebody out there that is worse. Right. And in a way better situation. And it's just, I tell everybody, just hold on, keep the faith, and be patient. Because no matter how many times we try to do something, if it don't work, it's just not time for it to work. Right. Because at that exact second when he decides it's his time and his timing is perfect, it's going to go through with no hitch. Mm -hmm. So it's just have faith. 
Jesus is there, God is there, they love us, they watch over us, I can see. I wear my rosary and I wear the band of Christ. Mm -hmm. I walk the life. I, my faith is so strong, I'll close both eyes and walk across uh, 210 because I know he's going to get me to the other side. Right. I mean, regardless, I mean, I mm. slept out here in the wintertime under a piece of carpet in the woods mm. until the lady in Subway bought me a tent. Mm -hmm. And it's, like I said, it's been an uphill battle, but I just don't give up. Right. So how long you been homeless for? Almost two years now. Two years? Mm -hmm. And then you just stay, just been in this area? Yeah, oh. it's pretty much what I know, plus everybody that I know down there. Right. It's like, I have a lot of people watching over me, looking out for me, making sure everything's good. Right. I mean, there's, I even got a, what's, uh, I'm trying to remember the gentleman's name. I know, I know him, but his brother is uh, Joe Hayden, the football player. Okay. His brother comes up and brings me uh, food from the marina down there, uh, you know, MGM and all that. Yeah. Great people, great people. I love him to death. He's like family to me. I mean, what am I kidding? Like 90% of our geeks like family to me because I care for everybody down here and they've shown the love to me to make sure I'm stay alive. Right. That's what's up, man. But uh, the 21st of last month, I walked up to the 7-Eleven at 2.30 in the morning because I usually help out sweep the park line up to the trash cans and they would give me coffee and food off the grill to bring it all away. Okay. On the way back here, after my epiphany, you know, coming to Christ and all that, I put a cigarette here so I can show you. Uh -huh. But uh, on the way back, I got stabbed three times here, in here, inside of my navel, and then down here. Mm. Total of, it was 17 staples. They severed my lower intestines. I laid there going into toxic shock for two hours. The ambulance didn't take me to the hospital. Nobody knows how I got to the hospital. Uh, the people running the front desk at the hospital, and even the fire department, does not know how I got to the hospital. Somebody took me and dumped me off. Uh, I went to surgery, was in surgery for eight hours, lost three feet of my lower intestines. When I came out of surgery and they put me into, uh, I forget what it's called, the room, it's an uh, anesthesia room where you're coming down from being medicated. Right. As soon as I woke up and I could stand up, I pulled my own IVs out and walked back here. Hmm. Wow. That's how I say So I what, what took place? Like you just, I mean, uh, you just was walking to some random stuff or? Uh, there was three dudes sitting on the guardrail on the back road there by 7-Eleven in Manakee. Yeah. As I was walking, I could hear him yelling, hooping, hollering, partying, having a good time. So I didn't think nothing of it, so I kept walking. One of the guys got up off the guardrail, and his exact words was, what do you got? And I was like, huh? He said, what do you got? I said, nothing, I'm homeless. Right, um, right. You want some chicken wings? I mean, right, shit. Right. He said, empty pockets, and part of my language, I told him F you. And right. before I could turn around, he stabbed me three times. Hmm. Just let me land in the road. And you seen these guys before? Or is uh, this... I've never seen them down here before. Oh, okay. But I think they're Were they homeless here. too, or you, did, you don't know? Oh, I don't know. Once they hit me, I went in the shop and hit the ground. Right. That's crazy. Hmm. The good Lord made sure I stayed alive. Right. He gave me the willpower and everything else to survive. Not gonna give up. It won't be long before I'm finally gonna be off the street because I've been saving up to get a truck to start my business out again because I already have the map of how I did it before. Now I have another map of what not to do to keep it. Right. So. You figuring it out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I, when I found out COD died, because he actually came to me and told me, and it took everybody there to pull me off. I was gonna beat him to death. Oh, what year was this, you said? I was eight years ago. Dang. Yeah, I was going to beat him up with my hands. So I, how your kids doing? Oh, they're doing great. They're in La Plata with my mom. Okay, you did say that. All right, oh, I got you. They're, yeah. they're spoiled by right. grandma and granddad. Right, right. I mean, well, grandma and step granddad. But so, at least they got a roof over their head and they, you know what I'm saying, they ain't out, you know. Yeah, that was the hardest thing that I've had to do in my life because my two daughters were my world. And to let my parents, or well, my mother and my stepfather take them, and them not be with me, and not be the father raising them and doing what I'm supposed to do, that hurt the most. It was like giving my children away. Right. But it's not about what I want. It's right. about what's best for them. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Because I couldn't see them. I don't think no way. Nah, yeah, you couldn't have them going through this. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I got to go through every day. I don't think the average grown man could go through it. Right, yeah. Now you got to be strong, man, to, to, to go through what you're going through, man. 
Oh, I trust so, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like I've picked up so much tips and stuff, you know, living out on the streets and you know, trying to survive. It's like dumpster diving at night, getting food that the grocery stores throw away. A lot of grocery stores throw away food that the expiration date's tomorrow, and it's still good and it's still cold. There's yeah, nothing wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. It makes it Right. Um, other than that, it's like staying warm, learning how to build little uh, bush shelters and stuff like that. Yeah. Until I got the tent. Right. But now it's like trying to keep everything dry in a cheap tent. Right, right. Um, but I think for the tent, I mean. Yeah. It helps out a little better than what you was going, than what you had, what you did have was I nothing. I had a box spring, a metal pole, and carpet across it, and I was up in it. Mm. It was like oh, the worst bush shelter you'd ever right, seen in your life. Right, <laughs> Damn, But it man. made do. It kept me warm plenty of nights. Mm -hmm. But it's like, now I know different things like chapstick and hand sanitizer. You mix them together, put a piece of cotton in it, you can get heat off of that for a while. Wow. <clears throat> <clears throat> There's a lot of little things. Little hacks, yeah, yeah. I didn't know about that one. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah. the chapstick's like a base of beeswax. Right. With the hand sanitizer, you know, the alcohol. In the yeah, alcohol. yeah. It's actually. It is of, actually warm when you use certain hand sanitizer. So I can, I can sanitize. So I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, it burns blue and it gets hot in the tent. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, it's, okay. it's been a long journey and. And hopefully I got many, many more years, but I'm not hoping to be out on the street then. I'm hoping, you know, that once I get this pickup truck and I get my business up and off the ground, that I will actually be able to get another apartment just for myself. Right, right. And that's why it's, I, you, you, when, you, when people usually see me, I'm by myself up here. Right. Because I usually don't vlog or hang out with anybody because the only people that are ever, actually ever happy for you when you're succeeding is yourself. Because everybody else, when they're not in a good place, they're wishing for your demise anyway, so they have something to laugh at or look at and say, well, it could be worse, I could be David, you know? Right, right, and right. It's like I have people come up here and they bring their kids up here. I've been spit on, cussed at, kicked, called a dirty bum, told get a job. And like I said, I've had folks bring their kids up here for me to talk to their kids, mm -hmm. you know? And basically, you know, the talk is always, you know, stay in school. Get good grades, get a good education, don't drink, don't do drugs. Just be right with Jesus. It's like when you get in the shower, you don't wash off before you get in the shower, you just go get in the shower. So you don't have to change anything in your life. You just right. bring Jesus into your life and everything changes for the positive. I mean, I literally went away three years ago, went to Foundations Rehab, and then I went up to Wells House, which is like a sober living program in Hagerstown, Maryland. Okay. From there, uh, January 11th will be four years for me cleaning and soap. And it's hard to do when you sit in front of a liquor store right, and handle it. Right, right, right. So it's in, it's in, it fell in your, uh, in your hoodie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always know that. You got it? You got it? I get it. I get it. Oh, yeah. But yeah, um, everybody keeps keeps good eye on me, watches what's going on. So you've been sober for four years? Almost four years, January 11th. Before oh, congratulations, years. man. Well, thank you. And what, was the biggest achievement I've ever done. Nah, I believe it. What, and what drugs did you uh, dabble with? Oh, I was drinking, shooting heroin, smoking crack, uh, smoking PCP. Pretty much I was a dumpster. Anything you put in front of me, I did. Whatever, it don't matter. It didn't matter. It was just to escape reality. Right. But no matter... And this had this all happened after, after the wife situation? Yes, that's what made me start drinking and going right. to the bar. So you lost pretty much everything after that? $2.2 million dollars is what the grant network was. Uh, Miller's Maintenance Company, all my trucks, tools, the four crews, my house, the trailer, my truck, her car, everything. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a big loss. And it, I can't honestly say it was a loss. It was me being stupid and letting it be given away. Because if I would have been sober and on my game, like I should have been. It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. And Lord knows I'd probably be one of the biggest companies in Maryland right now. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So you, you any other, I know that's crazy, that story you told me about your uh, the stabbing. You had any other crazy experiences just being homeless out here? Oh, out um, here? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, there's black bears. I don't know what type of cat it is, but it's, they're about the size of a Labrador. 
a big dog. Yeah. And they're out here running around. People just don't see them because they're not out all the time like me. Right. You said it's black bears out here? Yeah. Oh, wow. I know that I went up to uh, Hagerstown mm -hmm. and my boy was telling me, yeah, he was sitting in his driveway one day and a bear just came up. I know they up there. Mm -hmm. up, not Hagerstown, I'm sorry, uh, Deep Creek. Deep Creek. Deep yeah, Creek, yeah, Deep he up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I would believe they out here, but you just don't see them. They rare. They're yeah. rare. Yeah. With, with them building up like they are, it's pushing them all in everybody's they, right Yeah. Right. So and you actually seen going. one? I've oh. seen them. I've mm. seen them. I can tell you if you go across the street here mm -hmm. and you go down past the firehouse, there's a dirt road right there on the right. It's uh, Apple Apple Valley. Okay. It's uh, my own reserve. It's a private neighborhood. You can get in trouble for being back there, but like I said, I know everybody. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I go back there a lot and just walk. And I tell you, you see deer, you, I've seen a bear back there twice. Wow. And I don't play around, I just keep moving. Yeah. I'm not stopping to try to see Nah, it. yeah, I don't blame. Right, I know that's right. And the thing is, out there, about 800 pounds, and there ain't nothing a human being can do. To nah, stop. nah. And they fast, too. Uh, it can outrun you and climb trees, too. <laughs> right. That thing yeah. about climbing a tree, that don't work. Yeah. Coming up after you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But, man. That's. It's a hell of a journey, man. You you know, you, stuff you've been going through, man. Um, it was something else I was gonna ask you. Uh, pretty much like when you um, when you when you out here, do you do you do you do you panhandle to make your money, or do you just the people just support you? Just I think he pretty much supports me because that's why you hardly see any other homeless people up here at this shopping center. Yeah. I usually run them off because right. the people take good care of me. Too many homeless people get in one spot, it's going to mess up, it's going to make your spot hot. Well, They're going to tell you to leave because there's too much going on, too. Well, I find it rude to ask somebody for money. Right. So you can ask anybody that's ever come to this shopping center. I've never asked anybody for a single penny. When they come in, I'll look over. Like if it's a guy, I say, how you doing, sir? They go on in the store, what they got to do. Right. And they come out and say, have a nice day, that's it. Right. When they pull in the parking lot, they've already seen you. They've already scouted the parking lot to see if they got any worries or issues they're going to have to look for, you know? Right. So to walk up to them or even ask them when they come by you for money is rude because they've already made that decision. And plus, as soon as you ask, it's done. Right. The first thing you hear is, oh, I carry a car. But if you're just polite and just there, they know what you're doing. They know why you're there. They know, like with me, they know I'm homeless. So they already know. They walk out, you be eight, no, here, go. Right. I come down and get some egg rolls or go to Subway. And yeah. Sit right out here and eat and enjoy it. I mean, right. you got to make the best of what any situation you're dealing with, right. I mean, no matter what, I'm just, I'm just so fortunate, you know, that they let me stay here. I mean, I've got permission from the owner of the shopping center to be back there in the tent. Right. And that's a big thing because usually they will run everybody off. Right. And it's like everybody like that knows me and make sure I eat every day. I've got folks that come up here every day just to make sure they see me that I'm here and that I'm alive. Yeah, that's what's up. I've yeah. never felt love like this, not even growing up, that I feel in this little town. Right. All right. Well, I don't want to uh, jump subjects, but like what you was talking about uh, when you was in the military, right? Yeah. Another guy I was telling you earlier was telling me yeah. about the sand dunes and stuff yeah. popping up. Did, you you was telling me you you seen some similar stuff. Oh yeah, there's things over there that will actually grab you and yank you down. YouTube don't sand. really like too much of this stuff, but like I know oh, yeah, I yeah. edit it and try to edit it out a little bit if I could. But I'm, I want to post the real, the full thing. You know what I mean? When you'd be walking through the desert. You would step onto what would be felt like quicksand. And is this not. information that he told y'all that yeah, I'm supposed to pretty much tell? Basically, we've all had to sign papers stating that we right. did not speak about it. Right. Because they can't bring us up on track. And another question I got, too, is why are so many people that get out of the military end up homeless? Because our government does not give a shit about us. They don't at all. But they care if when it's time for you to sign up. Yeah, they want you to sign up. Well, they want the new guy to sign up because then they can pull the same stuff on them that they do with us that were already in the serve. Right. Their best trick is is to get you to do something or put you in a situation to where you have to do something that's not part of the orders, and then you get dishonorably discharged for behavior unbecoming. Right. And you lose your benefits, you lose your pay, you lose any help that you could get, you don't get to go to the VA or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's the way they keep money in their pocket instead of worrying about paying us. Because like with me, with my uh, clearance and my rank, right. I would have been making a thing here $5,000 a week if I'd have kept with it. 
Wow. I wouldn't have had no words. I wouldn't even have had to open up Miller's Maintenance. I got to right. just sell my butt and done right. nothing and went fishing all day. Right. But the government is about themselves, and people will slowly learn that because if they open their eyes, they'll say, I mean, why are we risking nuclear war with Russia helping Ukraine when Putin's been already said if it doesn't stop, he's going nuclear? Right. Which, honestly, I can't blame the man at all. Putin's a damn good guy. He grew up, Putin was born and raised in Leningrad, which was war for him. When he was a kid, that place was destroyed, and he grew up in that. Now he's got an enemy on his doorsteps again. Right. And now the U.S. is giving his enemies money, weapons, and help. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't blame him. I mean, just because it's an enemy of the government does not mean it's an enemy of me. Mm -hmm. These, I love everybody. We're all here for a simple, same reason. Right. We're here to learn before we leave this place, before we leave Earth. It's like the Bible, basic instructions before leaving Earth. It's not uh, Every day do. is a life lesson. Yes, every day. You pick up something from everything, and the best thing to do is find that silver lining. Something might happen that you don't like, or you might break your foot or something. But you know what? Later that day, you could have been walking and got ran over by a car, but now you got a broke foot, so you weren't there at that time to get ran over. So that broke foot saved your life. Right. That's God telling you, slow down. Right. Everything happens for a reason, and everything is timing. If the earth was five more feet towards the sun, we'd be a ball of flames. If we were five more feet further out, it'd be an ice planet. Our good Lord, he's perfect in every way because he's creating this planet for us to live. And the government is controlling us by, you know, work, home, work, home, work, home. We have to make that money to pay them bills. So as long as you got bills, your eyes are closed because you're going to work home. You're not seeing the big picture of what's going on around you. Right. Me, I've got a lot of time to sit back and think and look at everything and watch what's going on. Right. I mean, it's like when I got stabbed, the day before I sit here and I talk to a lady, I'm gonna leave her nameless because I don't- Yeah, no, that's, that. yeah, yeah, I don't wanna put no She's religious like me and she also thinks that it's coming to where we're gonna have civil war and it's gonna be all out. You know, we're trying to survive here. Yeah. And it's coming. It's right. coming. Right. That's why they wanted all of the, you know, every citizen of the United States at one point in time, it was okay to go buy guns and all that because the more guns we have here, you know, the less worries that somebody else is going to come over here. They've had videos before on YouTube where they've asked, like, Russians, Germans, and all that, do they ever want to come and invade here? And the answer right. is no because on the average, there's 3.1 guns per person in the United States. Mm. And a lot of other countries, they don't have guns in their homes. Period. The military and the police are the only ones that have guns there. So if they come here, they know they're in for a big old fight. But it's like the military, the technology that they have are your iPhones. They were developed back in 1964. Right. That's how technology is. So that tells you what they're hiding from us now. Because if they let us advance, they lose control. Yeah. Because we won't need them. Right. And that's basically what it is. I know I'm risking everything on what I'm talking about out here. That's why I'm looking around because you never know. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. I'd be on point too. If you see me looking at this, that's just me. I, you know, I'd be on point too, man. It's just my surroundings. Yeah. Yeah, because when you sign the papers of confidentiality and you can't speak on it, yeah, they really mean it, and it's not gonna be like they're gonna take you to court and sue you. Right. They try to come gonna disappear find you. One yeah. Night. Right. They're, you're just never gonna be seen again. Mm. And yeah. That's happened many, many, many times. I mean, so yeah, getting back to that, yeah, I ain't mean it, yeah, but uh, oh, yeah. about the sand dunes and stuff, we kind of lost track, but yeah, yeah about that, like that. When you're walking through the desert, like you would step into like what would be like almost like quicksand, but there would be something that would grab you and yank you down. Right. Um, we used to throw grenades down there and kill them. Okay. But that was one of our fun things over there. And what's the weirdest stuff you done seen out there, like far as that, that? The weirdest stuff, it was called the Kendall Giant. And it's it called the, what? The Kandahar Giant. It's in a mountain range over in Kandahar. They, two other platoons went over there on scout missions looking for ISIS, and they come up missing. So they used their trackers and they sent us over to go find them. Okay. The unit I'm gonna leave undisclosed. You can probably find it so on the internet. So you using the Army, Navy, or what? Marine. 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 Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. All right, my bad. No, go ahead. Uh, Division two, unit six of the 0317 recon scout sniper. When we got over there, we followed the GPS tracker and it led us to the mountain range and there was cave system there. 
This thing coming out of there was about 15 foot tall, long red hair, looked like a human. It was on two legs, huge as shit. I mean, looked like a wrestler, but 15 foot tall. Mm. Stabbed the sergeant with the spear, and we started unloading on him. Small arms fire would not take it down, so they started shooting him with a 50 cal. Three minutes later, it finally dropped to the ground. Mm. Half its face and jaw were blown off, and it was still trying to fight. What? After we contained it. So like a superhuman, it wasn't a human. Well, you, something it's, that big is more stronger. You can yeah, think. yeah. I mean, that thing could probably pick up a bus and throw it. I mean, it's big. Yeah, as yeah. But we could knock down a bear, pretty much. Uh, that thing. Yeah, that thing will punish a bear. The way you did fifty uh, cow. Like yeah. A polar bear. Right. Know, a regular right, bear. The right. biggest bear. The polar bear. Right. Yeah, because. Polar bear is like 16 foot tall. No, nah, I'm saying that's yeah. what I'm saying. It'll punish one. That oh, thing yeah. will punish bear. Yeah, yeah, right. It's and it's like when we loaded it onto the pallet and it was laying down on its side. It, of course, it was already dead. Yeah. Before we covered it up, when we were walking over to put the tarp up to it, and I stepped up onto the pallet, its shoulder was about right here on me from the ground. Wow. And this thing was laying on its side. So you're talking from here to here was here to me. Mm. The ground. That's how big this thing was. Two rows of teeth. Didn't speak any language that we could even understand. Not armed or nothing, just straight. Oh, it had a spear. And when we went inside the cave system to see if we could find anybody because the trackers were leading us in there. Right. We found boots, pieces of uniforms. Uh, literally, there was like old Roman shields, old Roman swords. Yeah. I mean, things from hundreds of years that it, I guess the group of it was collecting or whatnot, but we only had seen and came in contact with one. And you know, just like the human race ever, you know, if we can't contain a controller, we kill it. Right. So they had us kill it. Mm. You know, there's so many things like that in this world that people don't understand. It's like life came out of Africa. All life began in Africa. It came out of Africa and there, there's so many legends over there. And there is stuff here in the United States that people don't understand, can't see either, because there are things that our eyes only can, uh, you know, pick up on certain colors and stuff like that. Right. Like a dog can see things we can't see. Yeah. There are things out here that are like that, that we can't see, that are walking around, and they, they just don't choose to mess with us. Right. Because Stay they out the way. know something's there. But there's been uh, videos I've seen when I was in the military of a group of people camping. Okay. And they just started screaming and all that. It looked like if you look across a parking lot on a hot day, you see the waves of heat. It looked like that in the middle of the woods running at them. And it mm. killed the whole group. What? Another one I know about was over in Siberia. There was a bunch of college students over there camping. Mm -hmm. And they test fired a rocket. And... A whole group of them got ripped apart. Nobody knows what ripped them apart, but there was torsos over here, arms over here. There was a guy bent around a tree. Mm. So there's, there's things here that they're not speaking on or saying. Hey, no, sir. And the government just will not tell you because if you have that knowledge over them, you have that power over them because if we people, you know, feel like they're misleading us or not telling us everything, what use do we have for them? Right. Just, that, they're just deceiving right and that's the whole thing they do the whole time is it says uh shuck and jive they want you looking over here while they're doing something else over here i mean there's many things okay why would they need to have like a sea container that has got armed guards you know three humvees in front of it like five behind it Ain't nothing right. like a gun or something being transported there. Right. There's something in that right, 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 that right. they don't want you to see. Exactly. Anybody. Matter of fact, I, I'm not going to say the location. No, nah, you ain't got to say it, but you. Mountains of Colorado. Okay. There's a test facility out there that they are doing gene testing where they're splicing different animals together. Things have escaped from them. They've had, they have a specific group that go hunt these things and kill them. Because mm. there's no way you're gonna bring it back alive because it's gonna bite you till it dies anyway. Right. It's the way they the way they made them. They made it. Yeah. Yeah. Kill. yeah. It's just things to kill. Mm. They were doing that to drop them in certain areas and use them as a, a weapon. And it's that's sick. It's sick because there's things that are like most of them are crossed with a human, so it's bipedal. It's on two legs. Mm. So it can maneuver around, be one, you know, like a ultimate all terrain. You know, can go on all terrain. Okay. And it's like, okay, uh, going to Shenandoah Valley and to uh, uh, Virginia, to West Virginia. They have what is, uh, I forget the exact name of them, 
but there is a group of people up there. I think they call them the blue people. Okay. Their skin color is actually a bluish color. Wow. And they try to say it's from inbreeding and all that. You ain't getting the blue color. Right, right, right. Yeah. Avatar, real life avatars. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not that dark. I mean, it's nah, I know, I know, I get, yeah. Um, it's been a crazy day out here. There's all been all types of stuff. Going on. Yeah, man. Yeah, it'd be pretty busy. But I mean, there's so many things that. The, the good people don't see and don't know right. that I really wish you know I had pictures or videos to show them mm-hmm. but being homeless I don't have nothing no more everything on mine has been broke stolen soaked and let or ruined right. by the kids around here and the other homeless people because they get mad because I run them off from up here mm-hmm. because my main rule for this shopping center is you don't ask nobody for nothing if yeah. they're going to give you something they'll give it to you exactly if you ask it's rude it's really right. rude and I'll start I yelled at one guy chased him out of here. I mean, I walk around and I carry this 11 inch and then I got this one that stays on my side constantly. Uh-huh. I mean, why would a man that lives in the woods have to keep two knives on him at all times? Right. It ain't for humans. Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah, I mean, you gotta protect yourself though. And the thing is, is PG County, they know me, they know who I am, they grab my background. Right. And when I tell them what's going on, they leave me alone. Right. I can, if one pulled up right now, I guarantee I could walk out there and hand him the knife and be like, how sharp do you think that is? Tell me right. which thing, which right. thing. Right. And they wouldn't even say, oh, it's illegal, why do you have it? Yeah, they, they, just, they know what's up. Alone. Right, yeah. You ain't bothering nobody. I like mean, how my man came up to you and asked you for that picture and you gave him a picture mm-hmm. and he gave, you didn't even know he was going to give you money. Mm-hmm. He just, I'll, yeah, I'll you just, about that because nah, that's some real shit. That's hey, real. We're all here together and like I said, the good Lord's going to make sure I'm alive and fed anyway, no matter what. My Definitely. faith is in him totally. Definitely. And it's just what it is, because it's never trust in man, trust in God and yourself. Right. Because your plan not going to work until it's his time. Right. And, but back to the government, there's so many things. Like when they uh, packed up uh, Saddam's palaces, none of that gold went to the people. Right. How was that gold transported back here? Mm-hmm. That gold should have never been put on planes and brought back here. That right. should have went to the people of that country to rebuild their country. Instead, they bring it back here and say it's going to offset the cost. How's it going to offset the cost here when we don't even have gold here no more? Fort Knox is empty. All them vaults are empty at Fort Knox. There's no gold there no more. It is all overseas. How do you think they did Dubai? Mm-hmm. Where do you think all that money come from? From the oil and everything that the United States borrows from China, the sheiks. It's like, okay, the U.S. dollar used to be backed by gold. Now right. it's not gold no more. Why do you think they try to get everybody with a social security number now? Because they want to know how long you're going to be working, how much money they're going to get out of you. So they already know so they can plan so they can go borrow another $100 billion from China or something like that and put us even more in debt. It's like they came out with an average. It's like our kids are going to owe China like $5,000 a piece before they're even born from right. the United States borrowing money. In the hole. We yeah. in the hole. In the hole. <laughs> yeah. They say this is the richest country in the world. No, we have the richest government. Right. We're on the mediocre part of the countries because there's a lot of other countries that are a lot better off than we are because the government actually cares for the people and takes care of the people. Like I said, it's talking about Dubai. Go over there and spit on the sidewalk, see what happens. Oh, man. You're done. You can't even call with a with a nick bag out there. No, you do. Yeah, you, you, you can't. Yeah, it's definitely right. There's countries in this world that if, uh, if an addict goes out and they sit on the curb and they're high, there's no getting locked up. There's no court date. The police officer walks straight up to him, puts a gun into his head, and blows her head off. Oh wow! There's 11 countries in the world that do that. Right. Uh, but they say with uh, like that, it was uh, I think it was Portugal, where uh, all the it went from like 80% of the people in Portugal using oh, drugs like and living on the street and stuff. Yeah. So they legalized everything and then the government also would take an addict when they went to rehab or whatever and take them to like a gas station or somewhere, anywhere they needed to work and say, we'll pay half of this man's salary if you give him a job. They would get them into the door, get them working. And then next thing you know, they didn't have to worry about them no more. Wow. There's, there's yeah. different ways to go about it. It's all mindset. Right. Because when I was in Hagerstown at the Wells house, I was supposed to be there for four months. I ended up staying there for a month. Uh, 22 months total. 
Mm. I did my four months in the program, and then I had a, a it's like a probationary job that you can only have for 18 months because the next guy coming up behind you gets it. Right. So it's called the DCP job, direct care provider. You live in one of their houses in the program and show the other guys that are going through the program how to get through it without relapsing or, you know, going back out on the street. Right. But the only thing about that is where they pick you up from is where they drop you off when they're done. Hmm. And where I messed up is I went to work for them while I was up there instead of going to like uh, Amazon or anything like that and you know, saving money. So I was there, they were paying for my housing, but my food and other stuff like that, my phone, I had to pay for. But like I said, when uh, 18 months was up, hey. they just take you and drive you back off where they picked you up. Right. I had them drop me off here at the shopping center. That and is here. crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You got a story, man. So, I am, man. So, what you, like, what, what's your plans for, you know, the future as far as, like, I know you say you're trying to get out of this situation. What are you actually doing to get out of this situation? Like, well, I'm saving up every penny I can. There's a local lady that has a pickup truck that actually belongs to her son that I'm trying to get so I can reopen Miller's Maintenance and rebuild my life. Like okay. I was saying before, I've got the map of how to do it. Now I got another map of what not to do once I have it so I can keep it. Right. That's what's up, man. So if you had a message for, you know, just the people out here, the home, more homeless people, or since you done been through and you, you're you figuring it out, mm -hmm. do you have a message for the people that, you know, maybe struggling or in the same position as you or people that might be about to go through this situation, about to be homeless or kicked out of the house or anything? Do you have a message for them? Sure. Um, don't be stressed out. I know it can be stressful. Trust me, I went through it. But after learning out here, one, don't ask for money. Two, you can utilize help from like the county, like uh, DLR, you can find a job that can help you get to work, but you gotta have transportation to get there. Um, there are shelters and programs that will help you get to and from work, but you have to be in at 5 p.m. and you gotta be out at 5 a.m. Right. So it's still cold when you go in and some people can't make it there by five because they're still working. But have faith in God do everything right because the small blessings add up to the big blessing don't ask if you're homeless and you're panhandling don't ask for money right put a sign out there put your put your name on there say i'm looking for work right and put a number or wait for them to reach you if they think you're sitting there all day doing nothing they think you're either getting drunk or high you're not doing nothing productive mm -hmm. because they see you every day one, don't be at the same spot every day. I do it because in the town I'm in, everybody knows me and knows who I am. Right. So they already know what's going on. Right. Don't ask for money. You'll get more by keeping your mouth shut. Greet everybody with the most respect you can. And you, if you don't get your way, guess what? Think about the other person that didn't get their way. Just move on. Don't, don't sweat it. The more time you dwell on something, it's the less time you get to do something productive or something that will help you or help others. Right. I learned the hard way, like up here at the shopping center. I cannot be out here with the knives doing anything I want, and PZ County cops will not say anything to me. I walk to the shopping center picking up cigarette butts and stuff at 2 o'clock in the morning and cleaning the parking lot. Right. But I'll borrow the broom from Subway and I'll sweep the whole sidewalk up here every night. That's what's up, man. And that's why everybody up here likes me because when they, they, res they respect it. Yeah, when they come up to the shopping center, it's clean and there's nothing going on and they don't have to worry about some hard head robbing them or bothering right. them. Right. I usually head them off and get them out of here before them. That's what's up, man. Well, man, definitely good talking to you, man. Well, same here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That. I'm going to definitely come check on you, you know, for time. I know where you at now, so awesome. we're going to do some updates and, you know what I mean? We, I, want, I, want, I want to see you get your stuff really together, man. And oh, yeah. We're going to try everything to help you, man, if we can. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. Without trying, game.